You are now tuned into Let's Talk Podcast, where we talk less but do more. Today we have a very special guest. So my name is Stormy Anderson. I own the number one med spot in Metro Detroit, and mm. I'm a registered nurse. I've been a nurse for 14 years. See, this is this is why I was so excited for this episode because you a nurse. Mm-hmm. That was my first thing. I'm like, oh my gosh, you're a nurse, <laughs> and you have a med spa. Yes, and I know. I'm biased because it's so many people that just be popping up with the, the mobile IVs and the mobile. Mm-hmm. Some people don't be nurses. Yeah, is that legal? No. So literally, to give medication, mm-hmm. you have to be a nurse. And I figured that, and I see some people. We we coming in strong, right? I figure some people. I never seen no 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 credentials, no nursing classes, no nursing. When they pop up, like, oh, I got a mobile IV. You was hungover. You was this. You was this. Come get it. And I'm like. I don't think that's no. Cause you, what are you doing? Ray J, his mom had to go to emergency. Oh yeah, I seen that. Somebody was that. giving her like a mobile, like an IV, and I guess she had an allergic uh, reaction. Or did, or did she go into cardiac arrest? Yeah, something. something. And it was like a, it was serious. And it's like, was this person qualified? No, they said she wasn't a nurse. That's what I'm saying. They said she wasn't a nurse. So what do you? What are the credentials to open a med spa? So you have to have a medical director. So mm-hmm. I have a medical director. I have to have a doctor who actually write the prescriptions. Okay. And as a nurse, then I can administer the medication. So it's an actual prescription that you it's have to It's actually have. a prescription. Okay. You have to have orders. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't we just have... wake up like, oh, I'm about to go get a, a liquor drip. No. Okay. No. Like you actually have to have a doctor, DEA number, MPI number, nurse. I'm the nurse and I administer the medication from the doctor's order. We're okay. not doctors. Um, I do all my meds five, but my doctor is half owner as well. So he has to write the prescription. Yes. You. That, that, yes. I just learned something new because I'm thinking, <laughs> not really thinking, but I'm thinking I could buy a building. I would, I, I, well, most I, people I think that I could buy a building and I could get whatever I need and I could just, you wake up, you want to come get a liquid IV and I could just drip you. But then I was thinking people are allergic to stuff. So, it's certain things that they can't have. So it's like, who's checking all of these things? Before I just give you this IV, so you just taught me that you have to have a prescription for it. Yeah. So when people saying just pull up and get it, no way. Mm-mm. And you got to think some people don't even qualify for an IV. Mm-hmm. Just because you a human don't mean you can get an IV. Mm-hmm. Some people have certain restrictions. Like think about fluid restrictions. Right. You can't be getting all that fluid. Certain people are have autoimmune disorders. You can't be giving them all that stuff. So you have to know the the basis behind the medication. Before you can offer it. This is why social media, it always <laughs> reverts back to social media ruining everything. Mm-hmm. Because anybody can pop up on Instagram with a new IV business. They could even go as far as buying followers. Yeah. Pop up on Instagram, they bought all these followers, so you think they qualify. You go and get hooked up. You go into cardiac arrest. Yeah. Or two days later, you pass out. Anything is wrong. That's why I feel like as people... We need to be more, we can need to have more knowledge on things. I don't like talking about trendy things and stuff like that. Right. But it's certain things that's trending that I will talk about because it's it's health related. Mm-hmm. And it's very, very, very serious. You just wake up and want to go get an IV because you hung over and now you, yeah. you passed out the next day and you don't know why you keep having seizures, all type of stuff. So that is that is actually great to know. Being a nurse, yes. I have a... Um, I'm almost done with nursing school. That's good. So Congratulations. Thank you. I, you're an RN, right? Yes. Do you have to be an RN to have a med spa, or can you be an LPN? So you have to be an RN to administer IV medications. Right. Duh. So uh, LPNs can't even administer IV medications no. in Michigan. So even if you had, say, for instance, I was an LPN. Mm-hmm. I wanted to open a med spa. I would literally have to have an RN there every day yeah. to, to, to start administer. The yeah. Now, LPNs can do stuff in the med spa like post-op care. Mm-hmm. Because you got to think LPNs, you could um, do dressing changes. Mm-hmm. That's in your scope, right? Um, suture and staple removal. That's in your scope. What about massages? Massages. Mm-hmm. You could do stuff like that because that's in your scope. But when it comes to actually IV medications, an LPN can't do it. Exactly. Oh, that's that's that makes sense. That goes back to what I learned in school. Yeah. Certain things that LPNs can't yeah. do. But in the hospitals now, it's like Garden City Hospital. They let our they let LPNs start. IVs, which is good. Yeah, I wonder if you have to be like certified though. They got a, they have a whole room in a basement or a lower level, and it's like 
everything set up. You have to go through actual class. I'll say that's good, though. You got to go through a class, and you got to get trained, and then you can actually start the IVs, blood transfusions, and stuff like that. Started nursing when you initially was a nurse. Did you go straight for your RN or did you do LPN first? Nope, I did LPN first. Did I was at LPN for ten years. Oh my god! Um, and then I went back to get my RN. Um, but I felt like it was such a bridge between LPN and RN. Mm -hmm. Like you know the the we used to say when I was the LPN, the RN thought we were better. You know, thought they were better, and then vice versa. It's always a bridge in mm -hmm. the healthcare field with like seeing us LPNs, everything. RNs. Even it's even crazy. um, what the people call housekeeping. housekeeper. It's a bridge between every different. It's, it is. Mm -hmm. So it was crazy, and I was like, I ain't never going back to school. But then I was like, I'm going back because I can do more with my RN mm -hmm. license. Um, I always liked aesthetics. I always liked beauty. So I knew I wanted to bridge into that. I just didn't know to what extent. My OBGYN. When last time I seen her, she was like, this is going to be our last visit. <laughs> I said, why? It's a little older lady. I'm like, why? What's what's wrong? I'm thinking she's sick or something. She's like, oh, I'm, I'm opening up a mess. But like, I, I make more just doing fillers. And you I'm do. like, you're going to stop what you've been doing all oh, these years, like 20, 30 years. She's like, it's, it's, it's what's popping now. It's like, I can always come back, back to and be an OBGYN. She said, but it's this what's popping now so i'm about to open it and i and she followed me on instagram <laughs> she got an instagram she got a page everything and she's and she popping and i'm like that is great beauty gonna always yes, win that's great look you know we need our hair done our mm -hmm. lashes done our eyebrows done we want our makeup done beauty go win every yeah, time that is great what about um when you did you ever just do like bedside nursing? I did bedside nurse. I did long term care for a long time. Okay. So the nursing homes, I love the nursing mm -hmm. homes because it was just a little grandma and granddaddies. You got kind of familiar with them mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And then I branched off when COVID hit, I branched off into travel nursing. Okay, how was that? It was girl, I think I got PTSD or something. Really? Because it you seen so many people dying like drastically mm -hmm. within it in your face, like and they'll tell you, like, no, we're not going to do CPR on them. They have COVID. They're positive for COVID. Like, so we would do what's called slow colds because they didn't want us to get exposed to COVID. Yeah. Um. So you see all these people die, and I had to take a break from it because I'm like, even though the money was good, it was mentally, like, draining. I just got the chills because that's when I really start. I was a um, direct care worker. Okay. And I love telling this story. I was a direct <laughs> care worker. COVID come. I, I learned about agency. Mm-hmm. Um, so I started working with agency for little, for nothing. Like the pay was so small. So I'm, we sitting at lunch. I was at this facility. We sitting at lunch and this girl was like, I'm getting $27 like an hour, yada, yada, yada. I'm like, $27. I think I was getting like 15. I'm like, how? I'm like, how? She's like, oh, I'm a CNA. Like I'm a nursing assistant. She's like, ain't you? I'm like, no, I'm a direct, I'm a care, direct care worker. She was like, what's stopping you? I'm like, I just... I just don't like taking tests. Like I took my CNA class, but I just I'm scared to take the test. She was like, "We doing the same thing, and I'm getting twelve more dollars than you." Like the next day, I signed up for my class. I took my class, passed it, and I was like, "Okay," but the money was so good. Yeah. But you would be working with Miss Miss Sally on Monday, and she'd be dead on Tuesday. You come to work on Tuesday, she got COVID. Yeah. Okay. You'd be like, "Okay, I can't wait to get to work tomorrow and see Miss Sally." Wednesday, Miss Sally died. Yes. Tuesday, Miss Rogers died. Every day somebody was dying, and I'm like, I can't do this. It is mentally like I'm like, I can't do it. I'm literally seeing these yes. people. They're fine. It was one one lady. I even told her she she wanted me to bring her a, um, a shake from McDonald's the next time I work. I'm like, I work Wednesday. I think it was like Saturday. I come with the shake. She passed away. Mm -hmm. I'm like, and guess what? Somebody else is in a room in a bed. It's just like a revolving Robin door. door. Like I'm like, where's the empathy? They like, this is what happened. Like what? Eating lunch, like, oh, two, she did, 222 yes. died. Like, y'all not sad? They like, like, it's. But it was happening so drastically mm -hmm. where it became, you know, like, we see people die all the time it in the nursing home. normal. Yes, it was like mentally exhausting where I'm telling you, they was like, and I'm talking about when we was in the hospital, we seen young, middle aged, and old. So for me to see the young people, mm -hmm. and it, it, it was just too much. It hit me when uh, a guy from my old neighborhood, he died from it. Mm -hmm. And he was young. And I was just like, yes. when he died, I'm like, oh my God. Then I got COVID that next week. And I had a daughter, a newborn. Yeah. So me and my new, me, I had COVID twice. And my, my daughter was under me the whole time and she never caught it. Oh, good. It's crazy because she allergic to everything. <laughs> but she, 
I was literally texting my family in a group chat, like, yo, I hate me. I'm going, <laughs> what if I die? And I'm thinking, I was so scared because at first I just thought, okay, well, if, if somebody is old and they catch it and they pass away, like, it's, it's killing old people. Mm-hmm. Then when I start seeing young yeah, people, people, it's just like once that first person died, it's like, oh, my God, people are really dying. dying. Then I got it. I'm, I was... I was I, I got a video on my phone. I was crying. I'm like, if I don't wake up tomorrow, and it's like, I'm dramatic. I know. No, but no, but th- because you seen so many people die so rapidly. I was rapidly. scared to go to sleep. Yeah. Because it's like you would be fine during the day. I'm cooking. I'm 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 a little sore, but at night you coughing like nonstop. Like mm-hmm. the cough is just coming from. It was it was it was torture. Like COVID. Both times I had COVID, it was it was ridiculous. I really was scared to go to sleep at night because I'm like, I see how people not breathing. This shit hurt. Like, mm-hmm. you, feel, you wake up just one day, it feel like you got hit by a bus. Yeah. And I cannot imagine that on an old person body. That's why when people, COVID is coming back, matter of fact. Well, the last few places I've been working at, it's been COVID units. Yeah. Again. People got COVID. And the nursing home so used to not having COVID precautions. they like, okay, you working on COVID today. And then tomorrow you working on COVID. And then they wonder why. 20 people got COVID. It's like, y'all can't keep flip-flopping, but who am I? I'm but remember just, just when eight. COVID first hit, they wouldn't do that. Mm-mm. Like, I feel like you should go back to the beginning mm-hmm. how it was. Now, if you have COVID and you come, if you have, if I was in a nursing home and I had COVID, I could still have visitors. Oh, really? Yeah, they still let you have visitors in a nursing home. And remember, you used to have to be off for 14 days. How many days you can be Five. off now? Yeah, so they didn't cut that all the way down. Like, I remember working in the nursing homes and they were talking to their families through the windows. Me too. They couldn't have visitors. Now you can still they oh we can't stop them from having visitors visitors. Since what when? length what what yeah. sense does that make? It yeah. doesn't make sense. So I understand what you're saying about COVID made you made you slow down travel nursing because the pay for nurses, especially my brother's girlfriend was a nurse in COVID and she used to be she used to make so much money, it used to be like, but the mental behind Kind it, of. it like nurses committing suicide. And I I I'm not gonna say I get it, but that stress working 12 straight mm-hmm. hours and then especially in covid when you had to wear the mask the not the little mask we wear now no, the n95 yeah that's leaving a mark on your face and that's because you so, can barely breathe with no, them all. it's so hard to breathe with them yeah. all you be so hot with them all and imagine you working 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 sometimes even me as an aide i'll be at work and we it's so busy we can't even take a break so i can only imagine like the mental of being a nurse yeah because i know how it is and me just being a nurse and assistant and that's another reason people think oh you don't do nothing you just watching old people mm-hmm. it's so much bigger than that it's so you know much tell me, i'm like i just work 12 hours oh you know you just watch old people or don't let me get off work and somebody trying to argue with me i'm hanging up the phone so fast i just work 12 hours i'm not about to argue with yeah. you. i'm tired i am tired being a nurse in healthcare period it is it is stressful but you brought up them nurses who committed suicide remember it was that one period where them nurses was leaving these suicidal notes saying they were so stressed at the mm-hmm. hospital that they was killing yeah. themselves like the one like, lady she wrote the nurse she wrote her suicide note was addressed to the, to the hospital. hospital why she committed suicide basically like the hospital killed her yes like, and they don't care they working you that's what i'm saying i come to work i have 15 patients and i'm like why then i feel bad because i'm complaining about having 15 patients and my nurse yeah, thirty-two. Yeah, this is like thirty-two patients and everybody on their light. Where's my medicine? I'm supposed to get my medicine at nine o'clock. Everybody's supposed to get their medicine at nine o'clock. o'clock. It, you literally, healthcare is it's different. And it's a lot of totally people, is, I feel like a lot of people is going into healthcare now just for the money. And it's like I, I can tell who's going into who's in healthcare or like people that want to nursing school. I can tell me. Who really who in really it for the? In it, yes. And I can tell who in it just to think they're going to get some money. And them people was really not going to last. Yeah. I don't but it's so. unfortunate that I feel like I never get paid enough for bedside. Like, for real. Like, I worked in the inner city hospital. Mm-hmm. And, the stu- like, they first of all, the patients and the family will talk to you like you ain't nothing. Like you not shit. Listen, you will, you will be a bitch so quick. I swear to God. Like, and then they'll ask you for your medicine. You just called me a whole bitch, mm-hmm. but you want me to bring you your medicine. They be ready to fight. They be ready to do everything. What I tell family all the time, and I shouldn't, and I know, but I'm not going to get fired because I'm a very, very great nursing assistant. You know, they, and I don't say this in front of the patient, but when, don't follow me in the hallway asking me stupid questions. And you see I'm sweating. I done sweated my hair out. I'm busy. Everything just sweaty and I'm just nasty. And you chasing me down. He asked for water 20 minutes ago. And I say, you know they in here because you don't want to take care of them at home. Mm-hmm. They don't have a doctor's order to be in the nursing home. 
they're solely here because you, you don't want to exactly. take care of them at home. So you need to have a little more grace because I have 15 other people. Like, I'm trying my best. And if they don't see that, they don't when, care. When family come, they only see they family. Don't, and they that's think it. that's it. They don't or know. they'll call and say, my mama need lotion on her feet. Mm -hmm. Stuff like that. If you don't lotion your own mama feet, it's one guy who... That's not a priority right now. He wants his... It's one guy I had. He wants his plate warmed up like six times. Yeah, no. I'm like, just a cold cut sandwich. I don't eat cold <laughs> food. And I'll be feeling bad like, bro. <laughs> Listen. And you, when you said you feel like you don't get paid enough for bedside nursing, I get that too. Because even as an aide, the stuff we deal with. Yeah, you be like, was it worth it today? Y'all got all y'all pennies out of me today. Don't let me. And this is what I say. My friend, my friend said, you said this every day. I said they work me for every dollar. Today. Every penny. And I, I swear feel like to I was God. overworked. Because, yes. Or I get off and my money hit my account because I work agency, so we get paid the same day. And I'd be like, I just did all that. <laughs> I be feeling like I'm on a court. I'm on. I'm a person holding. Then holding you start a thinking the other stuff like, man, I need. I need like, to do something, something else. else. I need to do something else. And that's like I would rather. And this is this is gonna sound crazy. It's been times where I will call off a shift and like I would do a podcast episode mm -hmm. because that couple dollars and then it's the couple, literally the couple cents that I'm making at work and the work that I'm doing is like nurses Make need it to make be paid. Sense. Nurses, need yeah. to, nurses and everybody in healthcare need to be paid more. They do. And like you said, people. families need to have a little grace. Patients need mm -hmm. to have a little grace. It's a lot. It's a lot. So, now, the hospital, you know, ain't that bad. We probably got like five or six patients. Yes, and I've been trying to get in the hospital. It's just like, as soon as I say I'm almost in a nurse school, they just be like, well, we're not going to hire you as an aide. You can just come back when you get your... Because so it's now such I a have shortage. to stop telling people I'm in nursing school and just work and then just put my two weeks in and apply to be a nurse. Yeah. What made you start... What made you go from... Is the COVID and people dying, what made you go from... Bedside nurse. Did you go straight from bedside nurse and straight to your med spa? Yep. So what happened was I was a travel nurse. Like I mm -hmm. said, it just took a mental toll on me. So I took all my travel money and I was like, what can I do? But in the midst of me still working, I was seeing all these young people come in, high blood pressure, diabetes, hypertension. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking about young, like 32 young. Like 32, 34 years young. Oh my God. And they got diabetes where they're getting their limbs cut off because they don't want to take their insulin. Hard headed, they don't want to take their insulin, they don't want to take their blood pressure medicine, stroking out. So I was like, what can I do to help my community, but also stay in my nursing, but do mm -hmm. aesthetics as well? So I started out just doing strictly post-op care, helping women who just finished having surgery. Mm -hmm. um, and then I kind of branched off into the whole med spa with the- How did you like post-op care? Because it was an epidemic where everybody was getting surgery. So how was that error for you? It was like the hospital. Mm -hmm. It was it was it wasn't bad at all. Mm -hmm. It was just like helping them change their bandages, you know, um, doing their massages, vital signs, stuff like that. It was literally like a mini hospital. I think you trained. Um, who did my post op? Um, Le, I can't. I can never pronounce it. Who is it? Le, Le Bar Butte. Yes. Yes. You trained her? No, I didn't. But she, I'm. She's my mentee. So I'm a Let mentor. Let me tell you. Let me give her her flowers. <laughs> Let me give her her flowers. I love her. For one, her customer service. Mm -hmm. Her, 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 her this was three years ago. Yeah. So her space, I'm talking about before people really start doing it as like a trend. Yeah. She really is like the best in the, in the, yeah. in the city of Detroit. I, I'm willing to bet my last dollar on it. Her attitude. Um, she cool. She, she's qualified. She is. She gonna tell you the truth. Yeah. Like, She's going, I, I really, I really, really, I think I've seen her in one of your videos. I love her. Her whole, everything about her brand, everything about her space, everything. She is very she is. professional. She, she is. is. She is great. And I she get her. on my nerves. <laughs> <laughs> but I love great. her. Yeah, she is great. She, she come, whatever she says, she's going to come follow up with the, yeah. with the facts. Like this, you should be doing this because X, Y, Z. So I really, I really. So, really and that's the that. thing. Now everybody don't post up here. You don't know, sis, what you doing? And she also the one who told me that nobody should be doing post op care if they're not a nurse. I'm like, really? Because I because it's fluid. This it's bodily this fluid. Gonna be, this is gonna be a lot. I probably should have said it. <laughs> but I'm saying, I went to one girl and she was, she must. I think she just woke up one day and was like, oh, I'm like post up here. <laughs> she couldn't get no. She kept saying it's no fluid on you. I'm like, I can like you can touch. You know, you see it like yeah, yeah. moving. I'm like okay, and I'm paying like a lot. I'm like, how is it no fluid? Like, I, I, I can tell. Like, I can stand up and it's fluid coming out. Okay. 
I go to her. She got all that fluid out. I gotta, I gotta find a picture of my phone. It was cups of fluid. Mm -hmm. She like, I'm gonna fill it up, take a picture of it. It was literally cups of all this fluid she got out of me, and I just felt so much better after her. She like, who was you going to? I'm like, oh, this girl. She like, was she a nurse? I'm like, no. no. She's like, Are you crazy? <laughs> you don't let nobody play with your body like that. I'm like, she just, she like, no. And I literally was going to her faithfully, probably twice a week, because I, I trusted her, and she. She was she was qualified to do it. Yes, I love her. Everybody do post up now, mm -hmm. like you said. Like everybody do everything mm -hmm. now. Everybody is doing everything. People don't want to find their niche. Yeah, they don't want to find their lane, and everybody is just doing everything. But you like post up. I love post up. You love post up. I love post up, and then even like I said, I had surgery too, but I had complications with my surgery. So that's another thing that bridged me into like helping women. You know what I'm saying? Bridge that gap. I never do that again though. Same thing with me. So I had a tummy tuck after I had my daughter. And my thing was, listening to anybody, they told me to put on the faha mm -hmm. after I had, my, had my incision. So when I was wearing my faha, and not to mention, when you get a tummy tuck, you be you be numb. Mm -hmm. I'm not feeling it. So I go to her, and I take my faha off, and it's a wound now. Because it did hit? Yeah, it like bust, bust open. off. It. It's so ugly. I hate it. I never go back. I be thinking, like, I want to go back just to get that scar, just to get it fixed. But it's like, I can't trust it. So, this is what made me want to be a nurse, right here. It was literally a wound. Mm -hmm. So, she she got all the dead, like the, what is what is Dead tissue. Is? Yeah, she got it all out. And we literally watched it heal. Like, we watched it just heal from the outside, from the inside out. And I'm like, that's why when I finished nursing, I want to go into wound care. I yeah. want to do wound care. We watched the wound heal, and it was just like. Anybody else would have been like, girl, you better. So that's what I'm saying. So nine mm -hmm. nurses should not be doing post op care. Because mm -hmm, you don't even know what to do. Mm -hmm. You don't know if it's a wound or a bruise. And you at can't this take point. out stitches. Right? Yeah. It's not, it's, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's yeah. a scam. You really have to. Um, <laughs> and it's crazy how you she really. Said it's, a scam. it's a scam. A lot of people are scamming. And you really, you really have to do background checks. You on, do. You wouldn't think, let me do a background check, see if this girl is a nurse for real. But you have to. It's, it was even one lady who just went to jail. Look, what about all them people you, oh, you that was about, fake nurses? Oh, in Florida. And there's one lady who just went to jail because she was pretending to be a nurse. And she was going like to different states working as like registered nurses yeah. in different states. And the whole time she never had a nursing license. So to have to do a background check just to find out if this person is really a nurse is crazy. And let's be, let's go further. They license should be on the wall. Mm -hmm. If you walk into that business. You can ask where your license at. Every every it nurse that should it should be, be up. See, the state of Michigan ain't go if they ain't gonna do nothing else, they're gonna give you a license. Mm -hmm. That much should be on the wall. Where's mm -hmm. your license? Yeah, it's it's hard out here. Yeah. It's hard out here. It's, 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 yeah. It's, it's, you can't trust nobody as far as business. It's it's, it's let's go here. But that's somebody sad though. Me, it is sad. Somebody just I was looking for somebody to do my taxes. They're like, Oh, I can get you fifty thousand back. <laughs> but we gotta split it. First of all, I don't want fifty thousand. Right, but I gotta split it. It's gonna come to me, and then I'm gonna have my people. No, thank you. Yeah, it's no thanks. You, it's it, you gonna get scammed out of anything. So it's best to you gotta do your you gotta do your research. You do, you do. So man, so after you did travel nursing, you mm -hmm. did post op care. Yep. After post op care, then you branched into, into med spa. Okay. Because I like the whole like and. People think black women don't get Botox. Black women get Botox. Oh, no. They, need to they get Botox. lip fillers. Everything. They get everything. But they, we know that if we get it, like I just told this girl, this boy in my class, <laughs> I just told him, he want to get something done. I'm like, no, girl, she want to get lip fillers. Mm -hmm. I said, now you know, me not knowing nothing about it. <laughs> now you know if you get it, you, it's, it's a maintenance. You it have is. to keep getting it. It is. She like, huh? And that's one thing about black women. If we... If we commit to something like that, we know we got yeah. we got to keep doing it. So yeah, my girlies on TikTok. I follow a lot of influencers and people and beauty people on mm -hmm. TikTok, and you wouldn't even think like, oh, this person got uh, Botox, Botox or lip fillers. And yeah. I'm like, she's like, oh yeah, go get my Botox. I'm like, huh? Like black women is really in they in they bag. Yes. with their beauty and reality TV don't make it no better. And black don't crack. Yeah, so. The reality TV, everybody wants the bigger lips. Mm -hmm. And I feel like as black women, we got we big lips, got big, big lips. lips. Yeah, I would say, like, I want to, you know, so I was like. Girl, no. No, I'm like, I don't know. Because you used to get teased about your big lips when you was little. Like, your big old lips. Yeah. It's like, now, nah, everybody, everybody want, everybody want big lips. Everybody want big lips. Yep. What do you feel, uh, what all do you offer at your spa? So we offer medical weight loss. 
So we offer those Zenfit, you know, where everybody uh, using to lose weight, Oprah and all them. I asked my doctor for something. Like yeah. <laughs> we offer the Lipo Dissolve, which helps dissolve all your stubborn body fat, whether it be on your chin, arm, stomach, or thighs. Um, IV hydration, Botox fillers. We do a lot of vaginal wellness and education. One-stop shop. No, yep, it's a one-stop shop. And then we have an esthetician. Okay. I ain't going to act like I know how to do a facial and a wax. That ain't mm -hmm. what I went to school for. Right. So I actually have an esthetician on staff who do corrective skin care. Mm -hmm. so that's a big thing now. I said my daughter used to uh, suffer from acne when she was in high school. And I, when daughter I, in high school? My daughter in college now. Wait a minute. Girl, I'm not going to tell you my age. You know, I'm never going to ask your age. <laughs> I'm never going to ask your age. This is what I mean when I say black don't cry. Yes. So I have a, uh, she's in her second year of college. Oh my God, that is crazy. But she always had acne. But I'm telling you, when my baby felt, had low self-esteem, I was paying them people to get her face together. Mm -hmm. Like my baby not about to walk around. Sad. Sad. How much it costs? Yeah. Oh, okay. You know what so I'm saying? The esthetician, do, do she do the um chemical pills? Chemical pills. I love chemical pills. I want to try one. I never had one. Yeah. So she do the chemical pills and all the corrective skincare like. It's, you know, it's a beauty world. So it we is. do everything. So it's literally a one-stop shop. That's great. But my that biggest is. thing is the medical weight loss, of course, because everybody want to lose weight. And let's talk about that. Because this is the video that got me on your page. You was like... <laughs> what is that? The video that got me on your page, you was like... And it's just like, this, this is what you need because you have to have something that will draw the people in. You started off like, you know why you ain't losing weight? <laughs> I'm and I'm tuning in. I'm like, wow, because you worried about the wrong stuff. I'm like, yes. You worried about what he doing? I'm like, yes. <laughs> it is. Think about it. We always put ourselves last. Mm -hmm. We worry about our dude. We worry about the kids. My daughter all in college, and I said, because think what you need. You need. Mm -hmm. She be like, mom, I'm fine. You know I'm what I'm good. saying? I'm good. You worrying about that stressful job at the bedside? It's enough for me. So now, I promote self care. I love it. I'm a little too, I've been into my self-care, but I'm like, I'm getting a little too into it. Because I'm like, I need to rest. And, <laughs> yeah. been like, and I ain't been working three days. But they're like, mommy, you at work. I'm like, what you mean? She's like, you're not going to work? I'm like, is you going to work? <laughs> but yes, one thing, one thing I am big on right now, this is very new in my life, is rest. You have to get your rest. I'm slow mornings is like, because I'm a, me sleeping in and sleeping to eight. I swear. But I sleep to so eight. I'd be like, oh, I slept in. I start calling people. They'd be like, girl, I'm asleep. <laughs> Don't wake up to 12. Like, oh, I slept in. You woke up at eight? Yes, because I usually get up at five. Oh, yeah. So that I, is a I wake up in. at five. Like, I'm, I'm a five o'clock girl, and it's, it's not bad because I just want to wake up at five. Right. Like, I got to get ready for work. I got to get ready for school. My daughter got to go to school. I got to go to school. Either or. So I'm big on, on self care. I've noticed a lot of people is is into that this year yeah like self-care and rest and not let nobody stress them out what what is self-care to you like you said i think it's more so relaxing mm -hmm. a lot of people even when they come into my spot it's like a, i call it like a barber shop because mm -hmm. they'll come in there and they talk about all their problems girl and we be listening like for real he did what he did that but it's like they been into somebody who is not biased mm -hmm. i don't even know you Right. I'm just meeting you. So I can't tell you to leave that man or not. Have at it. But when you come in, it is so comfortable and it's such mm -hmm. a vibe. And that's just they release. Sometimes you just want to vent about your you dude. You need that space. Yeah, you need that space where I ain't going to judge you because I don't even know you for real. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So and you also need you need that space to vent to somebody you don't know. Yes. And people look at me like I'm crazy when I say I will meet somebody. Yesterday I had to take my daughter to get her blood drawn for her allergy <laughs> test. This lady was sitting next to me, never seen her in my life. She just started talking. Like, and I'm just like, <laughs> she's like, so what do you think? I'm like, well, me personally, you know, it's nothing out here. That's right. what I, I say, the grass always going to look greener where you're not watering. Mm -hmm. It's nothing out here. If those little problems is like what you have, and I'm not saying settle. Right. But if those are the, like those problems that you have, and they're really small problems. I would say y'all could y'all could work it out. She's like, "Cause how long have you and your man been together?" I'm like, "What man?" <laughs> right. And she was just looking like, "Why am I talking to you?" I'm like, "But after you get my advice, you go, like, hey, I don't know." But look, you don't even know that, but that's what I'm mm -hmm. saying. So they come in there unbiased. Listen. However, and I tell women, whatever make you feel good. If you want to lose five pounds, let us help you lose five pounds. So what do you, you do? Like, what what is the medical weight loss? Is so it's like just a, a weekly injection. No, nope, okay. it's a weekly injection and it suppresses your appetite. You can lose anywhere from 10 to 30 pounds a month. Really? So you got to think, my clients who come in, some of them have dealt with low self-esteem for a long time because they've been overweight since mm -hmm. they were kids. 
So for not for them to finally be able to lose weight, just their results, they just be so thankful. Like I just want to thank you. I've been trying to do this a for shot. a long. Yeah. Yep. Oh my God. Yeah. But it's an insulin. It's just like I'm telling you, you in nursing school. It's an insulin syringe, mm -hmm. five units. It's gonna suppress weekly? your appetite weekly. What do you feel about Adipex? I think it's it, it it gives it gives you too much hormonal. So like like it, your emotions and your hormones be all off. And that's why, cause my doctor, I'm like, can I get a, some weight loss? He like, I'm not giving you no Ozempic. No 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 no. He's going off like he arguing me like he my daddy, and I'm like, you're not my dad. So <laughs> he like he's not giving me Ozempic and this and this and this. Ozempic is a thousand dollars and all, all this. It's I'm, like, okay. I'm like, all right, I don't want it. I'm like, so what can I get? He like Adipex. I'm like, okay. Like, but if I give you Adipex, you have to get birth control. I'm like, no. Because it make your hormones. I'm telling you, you will I get said, pregnant no, in 2.2 seconds. I said, I'm not getting birth control. He like, well, I'm not giving you Adipex. I'm like, you can't say that. You're you're a doctor. <laughs> he like, I'm not giving you. So he, it's like he didn't want to tell me that. Mm -hmm. So when the student doctor was in okay. there, she was just quiet. Like, So when he left out, she was like, he, he, he wants to give you birth control because the Adipex, is, it makes you very hormonal. And it do. It's like when you start taking it, you can get pregnant fast. And I'm like, why didn't he just say that? She's like, because he can't. I'm like, okay, that makes sense. Give me the birth control. I'm not going to take the birth control. Yeah, I'm going to tell you. It's, it makes you so hormonal. Mm -hmm. You will get pregnant. But then the thing of it is with the birth control, some people with birth control make you get, gain weight. And, that's and what now you're taking the Adipex to lose weight, so it's both bumping against each other. I just other. told him, he like, what? He like, you're on birth control because you're on the shot. I said, I haven't got that shot in so long. He like, why? Because as soon as I got the shot, I gained like 20 mm -hmm. pounds. I just kept... I, it's like I just kept gaining weight, gaining weight, gaining weight. He's like, okay, the birth control pill is going to help you lose weight. I said, I don't believe you. <laughs> yeah, no. I it's, said, I don't believe you. It's go go against each other. Okay, so that makes sense. Well, I took Adipex before years and years ago, and I lost weight so fast. But it's like if but I did stop, you gain it back? I stopped taking it on Monday. I was I was I started gaining the weight on Wednesday. It's really? Like the weight started coming back. I just was hungry. Mm. Like I was because the Adipex had you like, damn, did I eat today? I need to eat. You really be like yeah. not hungry, but when you stop taking it, you you just eating. See, but with like the medical weight loss, I I took it in August. Mm -hmm. I wanted to lose some weight for my best friend's wedding. I've been off it since August, and I still don't have a desire to eat like I really? used to. Yeah. How much weight did you lose? I lost sure. twenty pounds in three weeks. Really? Yeah. You have no desire to eat. You have no desire to drink. The only thing I was thirsty, so I was drinking a lot of uh -huh. water. But I was like, oh, my best friend wedding coming up. I'm flying to Atlanta. I lost 20 pounds in three weeks. Oh, my God. I'm going to get some yeah. <laughs> For real. Like, that's like, what? 20 pounds in three yeah. weeks is, is great. And do you, um, I was about to ask you about the med spa. Do you do, like, courses? Like, yeah. you said you got mentees. And yeah. I, I thought I seen, like, teaching, like, I workshops. Do. I do. What all do you do? So... <laughs> I do all the courses. What I, I'm actually branching off into is helping other nurses open their med spas. Mm -hmm. So I all, just got licensed in all states. So I'm licensed in all states now as a nurse. Oh, wow. Uh -huh. Because when I go train them, I have to be licensed in that state to do injectables. Now, to get licensed in another state, because somebody that I work with was saying that they, was, they had a Cena in certain states that they would just go work for weeks mm. or whatever. Because it's certain places. Minnesota played a, Minnesota paid their scene so much more than they pay us here. Yeah. So she would just go to Minnesota for like two weeks, work them two and weeks then come back. And like her own little travel nurse through the agency, but she had to go straight to Minnesota and get licensed. It's no how do you get licensed for everybody? Or do I you just, have to go to each fifty? No. So what I did was Atlanta is a compact state mm -hmm. and I do courses in Atlanta. I got I got licensed in Atlanta, mm -hmm. which I had to turn in my fingerprints and you know, all that stuff, my Detroit my Michigan license and stuff like that. And it probably took about four weeks. So by oh. being a compact state, mm -hmm. I'm literally licensed everywhere. Oh, that's amazing. That's, yeah. that's really good. So you want to pick a compact state as opposed to going to different so, states. Yeah, because compact is basically where when you license there, it, you, you can, can use yes. it in a bunch of different other places. Yeah. So you offer the courses. What else? Mentorship. Mm -hmm. um, mentorship is big. I have a mentor who's in Atlanta. Um, and I think that's how I was able to scale and elevate my business to mm -hmm. six figures. Oh, so yeah. um, mentorship is very important because they tell you the stuff not to do so you don't lose all that money. Before I had a mentor, I, I lost a thousand, thousands and thousands of dollars starting something I knew nothing about. Mm -hmm. I know how to nurse. I don't know how to run the business. Right. Do you think mentorship, because a lot of people, I was actually looking, looking at some um, people mm -hmm. like to be mentors. But a lot of people, you know, like I, of course, our, our peers, 
you don't need no mentor. You grown. You can like I don't want to learn as I go because that's that a mentor can save Say, a lot of no, money. No, you they somebody can. that did what you're doing already. They can look out and they can save you a lot of money if you find somebody that's like a real mentor. Yeah, and not one of these skeechy people. My mentor is a massage therapist by trade, mm -hmm. but she we have a spa community over five thousand people, five thousand oh, wow. black people that's around the world. So she has. She has chapters everywhere. Um, so and she will tell you how to scale and make six figures in your business. Well, that's she's a millionaire now, but she's a millionaire as a massage therapist. Oh, she's a massage therapist. She's okay. a massage therapist by oh, trade. Yeah. That's what's up. Yeah, so it's the right connections. You yeah. have to know who and when to connect with other people. That no new friend stuff. Yeah. That no. is so played. Like that's so played out. It's it's twenty twenty four. I'm like, telling you the networking is you will, will, I don't want to be just local mm -hmm. as a mess, but I want to be known mm -hmm. for whatever I do, health and wellness in my community. But I don't want to just be local. You yeah, know what my I'm saying? friend, I have a couple of friends who live in Houston. And I'm like, I. And this is like when you have the right people around you. Mm -hmm. I'm telling my friend, like, me and my baby gonna come here next weekend. She like, okay, bring your podcast up so we can do an episode. Oh, that's cute. And I'm like, I wasn't even thinking. No, but yes, you got to think bigger. She like, why wouldn't you? Like, you in Houston? This is your podcast in Houston? You. I'm like that is what's up. That's, that's yeah. Like, I'm, and you having the right people in your circle, it means a lot. And that's why I always say people treat people like they're disposable. And it's like yeah, you're gonna fumble the wrong person. You do it, and you then is. you're gonna be looking crazy because you're gonna start meeting temporary people. And you're gonna be like, I wish I had that one person mm -hmm. the whole time. You fucked that person over. So now yeah. you just going through life hard, hard. And I life. met my mentor a year ago. Um. But she has poured so much into me. Like, mm -hmm. I can call her anytime, and she's just pouring into me, pouring oh, into beautiful. me. You know what I'm yes. saying? And you need that. Yeah, even when I'm like, I don't want to do this today. Like, I'm my momentum low. Mm -hmm. Why? Get it together. You know, she she that one who go. I would never who's think Who's going that. to. Yes. Watching your videos, it's just like, you always like. Entrepreneurship is ghetto sometimes. It is. It is. It is ghetto. It is. It's like, I feel like I was telling you earlier before we start recording. I feel like a lot of people, they want to see trendy stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't want to. I don't want to make video talk about stuff that don't mean nothing. Right. My whole point of starting my podcast, let's talk, is to do, do more. more. So it's like I don't want to talk about that trendy stuff, but it's so hard getting the support that I want and I feel like I deserve because mm -hmm. people not trying to like my last my not my last episode my episode about credit. That got the lowest views. And I feel like that episode should have got the most views out of all my episodes because who don't want to know about credit and business credit and why credit is important? Because these are not things that we want to talk about. And we weren't taught it. So think about it. Like our mom ain't teach us about mm -hmm. business credit. They taught us to go get a nine to five and work mm -hmm. until you retire. Girl, and that's I don't why, do that. Exactly. And that's why it's so hard because I just feel like my pod, I feel like my podcast is 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 is, is one of the best. Period, as you should. I do, <laughs> and I feel like the information that I give is amazing. Yeah, I'm very transparent. I'm talking to. That's why I say I could I could get 20 views, but I feel like I've reached millions of people mm -hmm. because it's people that's watching that's not gonna like. It's people yeah. that's watching that's not gonna share it. But this the as long information, as watching, the information that I give, and the people that write me like after I post my video, they write me like, "Oh my god, I needed to see that today." I was feeling like uh, I was feeling so depressed and so down today. And when you said this, that's what I do it for. But I know I could get more support if I follow trends and I talked about what's what's trendy, but I'm not. No, stick with I'm what you know. I'm not. I'm, like, I'm, I'm not telling you, it. even like that um, imposter syndrome, mm -hmm. all I swear to God, entrepreneur, all entrepreneurs, you were speaking to every entrepreneur with mm -hmm. imposter syndrome. Literally. Because a lot of people feel like they're not worthy. Like, I don't deserve this. Why though? This. And it's just like. Yeah. I was just feeling like that. Gretchen that sent me a check <laughs> last week. <laughs> everybody was on everybody was on Facebook saying they got, got a check, check. five hundred dollars, five hundred dollars. So my sister wrote me like, "You got a check?" Because I just moved. Uh -huh. I'm like, I'm like, it's probably not a check. Like, why would I get a check? It ain't no check. She like, are you dumb? It says pay to the order of. It's a check. Why don't you think you got you got a check? Why my check was way more, more than five hundred dollars? I'm like. I'm I'm googling and she like go to the bank and cash a check like I'm like because why would I just randomly get a check she was like you don't want it like we just sometimes when good stuff happen and that's like 
I hate that our community is like that. Yeah, no. We just don't feel like we are deserving, and we are. We And this is my thing. All Last week and this week, I always tell myself, I tell myself every morning now, I am deserving of mm -hmm. everything luxurious. I am deserving of everything that I desire. If I can think it, I can get it. If I want it, I can get mm -hmm. it, and I am deserving of whatever whatever come my way. I'm deserving of it because for so long stuff will happen, and you just be like, "Why did I have it?" Like, I don't know. And in my mind, I'm always thinking like, when some when it's real good, like one something good, bad about to happen. I be like, something bad about to happen. That's what I think. My sister be like, "You been like you?" Been, I'm like, something bad about to happen. Yeah. She like, I'm like, I just know it. But when I tell myself that some when I'm thinking everything is going good, something bad is about to happen. I'm telling myself that something bad is about to happen in my head, and then me not knowing that I'm doing it, I'm starting to move. You're and I'm starting, to, and I'm starting to self sabotage. Yeah, and I'm starting to do things to make bad things happen, and then I'm in Dixieville. Like, see, I knew it was gonna happen when I didn't did X, Y, and Z to make it for happen. it to yeah. happen because I'm. We gotta get our mental right. We do. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a, we do. it's a process. It's a, it's a. It's a struggle, like a daily, every day. No days are the same. Yesterday I woke up, I was like feeling good. I woke up feeling mm -hmm. good. Today I woke up like, I don't want to get out the bed. See? I'm like, like I, I couldn't go to class today. I just couldn't. Like, yeah. I'm like, I'm not, if I go to class, I'm going to have attitude. I'm like, I'm just going to, I'm going to slow roll my morning out and I'm going to get into the rest of my day. And then when I got my eyebrows up, then I'm like, okay. You felt a little I better. Feel a little better, okay. And then I came, and it's just like, this is like my mental dump space. Yeah. This is my space. That's why at home, I'm setting up a little space where I can do my own episodes. Oh, that's good. Yeah, because this is like my, my this is how I express myself. I really love podcasting. And you got to let it out. Mm -hmm. You have to. And that's why people commit suicide. People being depressed. Because yes. they're keeping all this stuff bottled in. And that's why, even with the people I have come on, people write me all the time, like, oh, I want to be on your show. No. <laughs> <laughs> like, for what? What are you going to talk about? <laughs> so, when I reach out to people to be on the show, it's just like, I know, like, it's certain people. Like, you got your man spy, you was a nurse. Mm -hmm. You are here to show, you're here to show other people that's in nursing school or that people could be nurses. It's so many nurses that's working doing other things because they don't want to do bedside yeah. nursing. The whole time, they could have just went to business with themselves, opened up a med spa, do post-op care. You're here to show nurses that it's other things that can be done. Besides bedside, Besides you can make way more money. Make way more money. Like you said, six figures. Mm -hmm. I'm very happy. Happy yeah. that you came. I appreciate it. I love Thank all the you. I appreciate you it. Thanks and for I having will me. And I will be checking out that mess box. Girl, 20 come pounds, see us. 20 pounds. I'm telling is, you. And look how good you look. Thank oh you. God. I don't want to lose no more weight, though. You look you perfect. Yeah, you're I don't want to lose no more weight. So. I can't believe you got a kid, though, but. Yes, yeah, her second year. Mm. This is why black don't crack. <laughs> black black women are luxury, and this is another thing I always want to talk about. And I I have people come on that's confident. When I went on your page, I seen like you just exuded everything like that I wanted on my podcast. You was confident. You had yo uh all your information. You had facts. I told you that one video, you was like, you know why y'all not losing weight? I'm like, yeah. I start writing you like I need you on my podcast. But look, I used to have low self esteem for a long time. From I when I was little it. to probably about probably about five years ago. Really? Yeah. I would never I had low self esteem for a long time. I would have because never. I always thought I was ugly. I I swear. And you know how you have siblings and y'all play the dozens? And my brothers and sisters used to hit below the belt. Oh, that's my sister. Listen, so you get to believe in that stuff. You know what I'm siblings. saying? I, have, I do it's too. Not it's not a it's eight of us. Five girls, three boys. Mm -hmm. And they hit below the belt. I'm talking about Six girls. Listen. Boys. So you start to believe that stuff a little yeah, bit. Like my sister, my 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 sister is dark skinned. And I always seen her this supposed to be like when you was dark skinned in high school, we thought you was a slave. My sister be like, You can if you roasting, you cannot be her. Cause she like, I've been doing this since I was in little. Like, Literally. I'm dark skinned, so I gotta know, like, I gotta and it's my daughter be like, Are you burnt biscuit? <laughs> like my daughter, you you try to roast my daughter, my daughter ready and I'm like Come back at four. From? She liked it from from my sister Tay Tay, ready to roast, ready to say this, say this. Yes. It's just like, no, we are beautiful. Yes, we is. Mm -hmm. We is. And your teeth is perfect too. Thank you. You are. Always... <laughs> the girl that was on here, her name Marva. I was, she was looking at me like, I'm like, oh my god, your teeth. What kind of toothpaste are you? She was like, girl. She told me. I'm like, yeah. Like, black women, black women are beautiful, and I want us to know that. This is me speaking to myself, but some days I wake up like. 
Like, I want to get chin lipo. But I always had My doctor, he like, we got to check that thyroid. Because I say, you say that every time I come. You know I got a fat neck. You check it all the time. I'm like, you check it all the time, and it doesn't be nothing wrong. Like, I have a fat neck. He like, I'm like, check like check the chart. He always check my thyroid to think that there's something wrong. And I'm like, I just have a fat neck. So. I think sometimes we just got to remind ourselves. Like, we the ish. Mm-hmm. I think black women is so dope. I'm like a girl's girl. Me too. So I think black women is dope. And I think we so powerful when we together. Together. That's my thing. So, man, we can do so much stuff. I just commented on this girl TikTok. I'm like, you are beautiful. And one of my sisters happened to see it. And they screenshot it like, <laughs> you're weird. I'm like, she is. <laughs> like, but, Nichelle, like, you need to stop. I just like I, no, me too. I would do that I'm, too. Or I be no deal. Like, have a great day. I see you shining. You know what I'm saying? Come right, like you did that. Or if I if I follow you and you always like in a upbeat mm-hmm. and you post something, you be like, yeah, I'm. You didn't got a whole book for me. Like, girl, keep going. Yeah. Today you seem like something bothering you. One time I wrote this girl this long message. I'm like, you seem like you you like you you having a hard time with something. If you want to talk, mm-hmm. like I'm here. You want to go to the gym? You want to do this? I'm here. I'm here. She's like, oh my god, I just found out I was pregnant. Yet. I'm like, am I a psychic? Like, what? No, you be but knowing. No, you just know. Like, and one thing I always say is you don't know nobody by social media. You don't know people that post because we only post what we want you to right. see. But you get an idea of how a person is via social mm-hmm. media. Doing. I, I meet a lot of people. I've been following a lot of people for years from social media. And it's like, on social media, we like best friends. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I can't wait till we like meet in person. And then you meet person to person. You're like, okay, no. Yeah. So. I am definitely a girl's girl, and we are all, um, when we together. It's crazy. It's amazing. I know. I do want to get some guys on the show, but I love just it being a girl thing. Okay. Yeah. I but, I mean, I'm going to have some guys on here, but it's like, I don't do it now, ever. <laughs> right. So, <laughs> I really appreciate you coming. Um, this Thank episode you. This will be posted tomorrow. Okay. I'm excited. I am, too. I, um, I will be checking out your mess, but I want a facial. I had a facial one time before. I want to get a facial. It's a lot of things I want to do. I ain't started getting facials for like five years ago, though. Yeah, I had a facial one time a couple years ago, and I want to, I want to, I want to put that into my uh, routine because I am on my um, self care journey, self care thing with like my skin care because my chest be breaking out. It's just a lot of different mm-hmm. stuff. I want to start incorporating into my day to day, day to day life. So that's good. I will be checking you out. Yeah, I will be. I want you to text me or write me all your. Um, handles like okay your mail spot everything so i can put it on the video i never okay. put that on the video in like the description i'm gonna start doing that too and i appreciate you thank you i appreciate you. it 